Why recycle? Recycling reduces greenhouse gas emissions that cause global warming and climate change. In this segment, we'll be discussing some of the adverse effects of non-recycling. Rivers, lakes, and oceans. Unfortunately, much of our waste ends up in oceans, harming birds, marine animals, and ultimately humans. When it storms, rain or snow flowing along their natural path headed for sewage systems, storm drains, rivers, and streams carry with them any garbage littered along its course eventually concluding its journey inside vast bodies of life-supporting waters. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch Symbolic to our littering, dumping, and poor recycling and waste management habits. Although there are many garbage patches in lakes, rivers, and oceans around the world, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is the largest of its kind stretching out twice the size of Texas and weighing over 3.5 million tons. Although some of the waste is produced by ships and seafaring activities, it is estimated that approximately 80% of the waste comes from land-based sources. Nearly 90% of garbage debris found is plastic. When exposed to ultraviolet light, most plastic becomes brittle. It is then easily broken into smaller pieces and eventually into micro pieces of plastic debris, sometimes referred to as microplastics. Strong currents, colliding objects in water trigger this breakdown. Other reasons debris finds its way into oceans are natural disasters such as hurricanes, tornadoes, tsunamis, floods, and strong winds. Albatross, fish, and sea turtles are critically affected by this. From above, these large seabirds mistake the debris for food. Every year, approximately 200,000 adult albatross die from the garbage patch. And half their babies born die from plastic and garbage contamination passed on through their parents. Studies conducted by a scientist researching the death of albatross prove that on average, 45 pieces of garbage debris are found inside the birds, most of which are plastic. Albatross are only one example among many bird species affected. In addition to mistaking garbage for food, sea turtles are also conflicted with the threat of becoming entangled in fishing lines and ropes left behind by fishermen to ultimately merge with the ever-expanding, circulating refuse. This has led many to their death. Sea turtles are now at high risk of becoming extinct. The process of food chain contamination begins with small fish ingesting plastic and other noxious chemicals. Consequently, when bigger fish eat the contaminated fish, they too become contaminated. This process resumes until the top of the food chain similarly becomes poisoned by the release of toxic chemicals inside their digestive systems. Dolphins and whales are among the hundreds of thousands of marine animals victimized to their death resulting from the garbage patch. Conclusively, at the top of the food chain we find ourselves disconcerted at the notion that we are essentially the cause of our own defeat. Phytoplankton, responsible for producing half the world's oxygen by means of photosynthesis. These are microscopic plant life that serve a vital purpose in both the ocean's ecosystem and the Earth's atmosphere. Phytoplankton remove carbon from the atmosphere and place it deep within the ocean, making it a key player in reducing greenhouse gases that cause global warming and climate change. 
They are also at the base of the marine food web, providing marine animals a nutritional diet. Studies have shown that plastic prevails phytoplankton in the Pacific Ocean by six times. This denotes that for every single organism of phytoplankton, there is six parts microplastic. The detrimental effects are severe, altering the natural process of ocean and atmospheric biosphere. Marine debris is acting as a sun filter inhibiting the phytoplankton from conducting photosynthesis that ultimately provides us with half the world's oxygen. Landfills When we don't recycle, our waste is taken to landfills where it is burned or left to decompose. Landfill space is becoming an increasing problem. Since there are many health risks associated with living too close to landfills, finding suitable locations are challenging. In Canada, landfill sites produce about 30 megatons of carbon dioxide equivalent in methane emissions annually. Since methane is a greenhouse gas that contributes to global warming, landfills around the world are a growing concern. Canadians can significantly reduce methane emissions by composting their organic matter, such as coffee grinds, fruits, vegetables, and so forth. Sustainability If we don't change our production and consumption habits, we'll eventually run out of our natural resources. Why recycle? Well, to sum it up, Recycling saves birds and marine animals from becoming extinct. Recycling is beneficial to our health since we eat the fish that ingest the garbage debris. Recycling improves ambient air quality by enabling phytoplankton to conduct photosynthesis, which ultimately provides half the world's oxygen. Recycling reduces air pollution created by landfills. Recycling will ensure that we don't run out of raw materials, our natural resources. Thank you for choosing to recycle. Please visit www.earthreform.org.